Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another webinar, another Deep Brown Consulting webinar on Excel and Power BI. Happy New Year to everybody, and we're going to have a really wonderful 2018, uh, politicians notwithstanding. So um, today we're going to basically just be going through some reviews of last year. I just want to pick one or two interesting things in Excel and Power BI last year, and then we talk about it. That's what we're going to do today. Typically, we do a review of the updates for um, Power BI. In every month, Power BI does a lots of updates on Power BI, and even Excel does lots of updates. But we just want to look at some memorable ones from last year. And so, um, for those that haven't been watching, I, I can see quite a number of people that we know on the webinars. A person speaking is David. David Brown is my name. I work as a principal consultant of Deep Brown Consulting. I've been working with Excel for a very long time and now with Power BI and uh, also a master trainer, master instructional designer. So um, sponsors for this webinar is Deep Brown Consulting, who are basically experts in training, consulting and payroll. So those are the uh, three things we do. And for those that follow all our webinars, you know that there's also a financial modeling webinar almost after, immediately after this one. And in that financial web modeling webinar today, we're going to be talking about sensitivity analysis. So it's going to be quite an interesting one about sensitivity analysis, which is done in Excel. So it's a bit like Excel, but it's more for financial modeling. All right. So these are some of our courses we offer. These are some of the in-house courses we offer. We also have an online school on Office Training Hub. So if you go to officetraininghub.com, if you haven't already, there's a free Excel course there free uh, five-day Excel Essentials course. So you could go and take that free course. It's very, very useful on officetraininghub.com. I advise you go get that free course. These are all the other courses we do, financial modeling, Excel, Office, financial analysis, Office 365, and the like. So that is us. You could go check us out. And we have affiliations with Microsoft, Financial Modeling Institute, and ATD, which is the Association for Talent Development. So these are uh, the bodies that we associate with. Financial Modeling Institutes, for those that are interested in modeling, I advise you watch the webinar starting at um, 11 o'clock today. And there's a different link, actually. It's not the same link. So if you're interested in it, just type a yes in your chat, and I'll make sure you get the invite once we finish with this webinar. So if you're interested in financial modeling, you could just type a yes in the chat tool so that I know that uh, I will ask someone to send you an email with the link so you can get registered for the next one. Yep, so if you're interested, just type a yes and you'll get that. So kind of, uh, for, for those really interested, I think um, it's nice to announce that there's a new financial modeling certification. So there's a new, just like ICANN or ACCA or CFA, there's a new uh, financial modeling certification from the Financial Modeling Institute. Level one is Advanced Financial Modeler. Level two, Chartered Financial Modeler. And level three is Master Financial Modeler. And I can tell you from being a modeler for lots of years that it's an excellent certification. And guess what? We've kind of put pressure on them and they have, and, uh, they have conv convinced them that Nigeria is viable. And they now have a center in Nigeria. So the exams are going to hold in Nigeria starting in April. So check that out. Go to FMI or fminstitute.com to check that out. All right, cool. So let's see what we have for today. Well, uh, another thing is you could join our meetup groups. I know a lot of you here are from the meetup group and some of you are from the POG group. So these are all free resources we have online. We have a financial modeling meetup on meetup.com. We have a Power BI and Excel meetup also on meetup.com. And then on Power BI user group, we have the Nigeria Modern Excel and Power BI user group. So all those will give you emails. You'll see our newsletters on that as well. So that's all about us and all about the sponsors. So we're going to get ready to enter into today's activity. So if you want to reach us, you could reach us on training at dbrownconsulting.net. So if you didn't get any email from us regarding maybe the financial modeling meetup and you want some more information on some of our free resources, just send an email to training at dbrownconsulting.net or you could call us on 0700 training. And yes, of course, you could also go and get free courses on officetraininghub.com. Right. 
So today we're going to be talking about a quick overview of um, uh, live meetup dates. Okay, well, we had some live meetups last year. I will share some pictures with you. And then we're going to talk about top five modern Excel uh, updates, features for 2017, what are top five Power BI features. And then we check and see custom visuals, what custom visuals were really excellent for the year. And maybe we have a challenge for the month and our winner. All right, so that's the format for today. So I'm going to jump into the Excel side of things first, and then we'll quickly go through to see what were the best things in Power BI. For the Excel side, it's going to be a demo. So we're going to use a demo to demonstrate these five things I'm going to show you now. So what are those five things? All right, so for us, uh, we kind of our favorite five. I'm going to just show you the five now, and then we'll go and do a demo. So our favorite five is get and transform. The get and transform in 2016, if you use Excel 2016, they got rid of the get external data uh, tab and they just replaced it with get and transform. If you've been watching all our webinars, you see that we predicted that that will happen because get and transform is the modern get data and that is power query. So get and transform is just power query for those that uh, are confused with the name. Get and transform is power query. And it's a hugely, hugely important tool in Excel. Um, Power Query is something they call an ETL, that is Extract, Transform, and Load tool. And it, you can use it to get any sources, different sources of data, about 70 different sources of data, and bring that into Excel and do your analytics. So it's excellent. And another big one was two new functions, switch and ifs. So anyone here has used switched and ifs? Can you type yes or no in the chat? Have you used switch and ifs function? So switch and ifs, you can type in the chat, type yes, you have, or no, you haven't. Type yes, anyone, has, has anyone used switch and has anyone used ifs? Not if, not if, the plural of if, which is ifs, okay? Oh, good, someone has used ifs already, that's nice, good. All right, excellent. Some of you have used ifs. So the plural of if, yeah. Okay, and then switch. Good. So that's we're going to have a look at that, see a demo of that. And then another one we really, really like is flash fill. Flash fill, I think, has been a hidden gem in Excel. Many people still don't know uh, about flash fill. They just see something happen and wonder what is Excel doing. So it's an old update, but I think it's still very cool. And we have concat and text join. This is not concatenate. It's something called concat and text join. And then finally, tree map visual. We really like this tree map visual. That's all. Tree map visual is a, um, a visualization that helps you. It kind of replaces how that works. So we're looking at all these um, all these five things and then we can just use one case study to kind of look at all of them and then we go and look at what our top five for excel all right so let's get started all right well before we get started i would like you to quickly answer a typical poll that we usually do so we just have the statistics so let's see i just want to know what your current bi tool is I know some of us would probably have updated our BI tool, so just just let me know what your current BI tool is. All right, so it seems 86% of us basically use Microsoft Power BI. That's excellent. I'm really surprised. That's nice. And 57% Excel. So it seems all our webinars um, we've started using Power BI a lot, which is very very good. Okay, and Excel and Power BI work perfectly together. You, you, what you can do for 2018, one of your New Year resolutions should be how to make Excel and Power BI fully integrated so that when you bring out stuff, do stuff in Excel, you publish it straight to Power BI and use Power BI to now give you better visualizations. Because I think that's the best way to work. You do some interesting analytics in Excel, you publish it to Power BI, then you now use Power BI to do visualizations, right? Okay, so let's have a look at this. We're gonna look at switch ifs and to look at switch and ifs, we need to kind of remind ourselves about if. So if you remember if, let me just show if. So let's let's start off with if first, right? So we're, we're going to start off with if. And 
Yeah, I, I know a lot of us use if, but if you come, if you do our modeling courses, you see, we always tell you don't use if it's inefficient, especially when it comes to modeling, you should use certain alternatives because nested ifs are very confusing. So here we're trying to find, let me just maximize this a bit. Uh, maybe I'll just hide a few columns. Let me hide this column. Shortcut I just did for that is if you want to hide a column, you click on a cell. And if you want to hide this column, for example, you do control zero. Control zero hides the column. And then control shift zero unhides it. So you control zero, hide. And then I highlight where the column is hidden. See those two cells? I know the column is hidden in between. And then I do control shift zero and it brings it back. So can you type what is the commission for the first guy? Just type the commission what's the commission so i know you understand what it looks like and then you can just type the commission and then we're going to do the formulas here we are going to look at if so if you are using if this is the old school way right if i said if if has this uh, argument uh, that says although it's quite small let me just zoom in let me zoom 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 in okay make it a little bigger for us okay Okay, so equals to if. If says logical test value if true, value if false. So logical test is saying, what is our logical test? Our logical test is saying this um, sales channel, right? We're comparing this sales channel first. Are you equal to, when you're equal to this sales channel at the top here, right? When you're equal to that, then the table that I will need is this. Now, VLOOKUP is key for this solution, but the only issue with VLOOKUP is that VLOOKUP needs to know which table to look at. If you, if you, everyone knows VLOOKUP, right? But VLOOKUP, we only look at this table if it is online. We only look at this table down here if it is direct. And we only look at this table down here if it's retail. So what you do here is I'm saying, if this uh, value is online, then give me this table. I'm going to lock the table. Then I do a comma. So the comma for if is, if it is not online, what happens? So I'm gonna ask another question. I'll say, if this is equal to direct, which I'll lock as well, then give me this table. Yeah? So that's the value if, if it's online, if it's direct. Then the last question is, no, if it's not any of those if it is not this or is not this, then obviously it's going to be this. So the last one, can we can just highlight that. So, so let's look at this our formula. We're saying if this sales channel is equal to M5, which is online, then give me this selection. If it is equal to M12, uh, then give me this selection. If not, give me what? The last selection. Now, someone should tell me what's going to happen when I click enter. If you, if you, most of you here are pretty good in Excel, which is cool. So just tell me what will happen when I click enter. Let's see what will happen. Just type uh, enter and tell me what will happen. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really, what we're saying here is, hey, if, if this is online, then give me a table. Give, we selected a range. Excel can't understand that. So it's going to give you a value error. So, but let's see, Oop. enter, let's enter, enter. Too few arguments to it. Let's just check what we did wrong here. Um, if this is equal to that, hold on, let me click on FX. So I clicked on FX. So I'm saying if this is, oh, I'm supposed to have typed if. So you see, we made a mistake, the, oops, 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 oops. I'm supposed to type another if. So let's just do it again. If this guy is equal to this heading, F4, we're saying, give, oops, is equal to this heading, F4, give us this selection, right? F4, then comma, we're supposed to type another if, we didn't do that. And then if, I'm already jumping to ifs, if this guy is equal to the next table's heading, F4, then give us this range. F4, but then comma, if it's not, if these two are not the same, if this is not equal to this and it's not equal to direct, then what is it going to be equal to? It has to be equal to retail. 
So we just highlight retail. So you can see that we have three tables, three conditions. When you have three conditions, it means you need two ifs. So the formula is the number of ifs you need is equal to the total number of conditions you have minus one. That's the logic of if. So the number of ifs you need is equal to the total number of conditions you have minus one. So I'll put two brackets. If I enter this time around, it's gonna give us value error. Now, the reason it's giving us value error is because there are too many things to show. We highlighted this whole table. So the question is, if this is online, it's supposed to show us zero, zero to 100, 2%. Now, uh, 0 to 1,002%. Now, for, to force a formula to show itself, whenever ever you get a value error in Excel, it means there's too many things there. I want to force Excel to show me itself, to show me. What. So I press F2, yes, but I want Excel to blow this formula up and let it show me really what is inside the formula. Because value error means there are too many things and I can't show all. So it's F9. When you do F2, you press F9. So you look at it, F2, F9. Look at what I have in here. I have zero. 0 1000 0 0.2 which is this can you see 0 0 1000 0.2 and then 1001 comma 1001 0 0.7 which is this so can you see that so can you see this was 0 0.2 so if this was um, let's say direct if i change this to direct and then i come here and do f2 f9 you will see that it is now the 0 0 1000 0 0.5, which is the second table. So this is working, but it's working, but it's showing a range. And the reason we wanted the range is so that we can now use VLOOKUP on that range. So for those that know VLOOKUP, you will now come to the beginning of this formula and do your VLOOKUP. On your VLOOKUP, you check your VLOOKUP. You, what are we looking up? We are looking up the quantity. So this quantity we're looking up, we're now going to comma. And then we're saying, when you look up this quantity, this entire table, this if, all it did was give us an entire table. So for this entire table, I want you to look at this quantity in this entire table that if is given us, and then give us column three, because column three is where our commission is. And then give us column three. Now, most people, when you do VLOOKUP, the last thing is false. But this kind of VLOOKUP, you don't type any false at the end. You just leave it blank and you close your bracket. So this is a special kind of VLOOKUP. So this formula is a special kind of formula, and this is what works for commission, because what you're doing with VLOOKUP is you're looking up diff three different tables. And VLOOKUP can look up two diff three different tables. That's why you need an if. So you need an if statement to go and choose the correct table. OK, so that's if. Let's look at, um, let's leave ifs there, and let's do another one. Let's do ifs. So let's see how ifs looks. So I'm going to kind of minimize this. Let's just give us some space for ifs. Let's take this side. All right, so I'm going to just bring out ifs. So let's see how ifs works. Yeah. So if I'm too slow, too fast, let me know, please, in the chat so that I can slow down or speed up. OK, so ifs, ifs, ifs. How will ifs do this uh, magic trick? So let's, let me insert some columns here. Okay, so ifs, let's check. Ifs, so ifs has, what is if syntax? Let's check. If says logical test one value, if true. Let, let's just put fx and let's see how ifs, this is how ifs works. So if you remember if, if had logical test, value if true, value if false, but this one, instead of you typing if and if, if inside if, you just use one if and do everything in one if. So it's kind of similar to what we just did, but the logical test is still the same thing. This direct, are you equal to this heading here? All right, that is the first logical test. All right, so that's our first logical test. Are you equal to that? And then our value if true, so if it is really true, then give us this table. Then the second test, we just go to the second test. We don't need to type another if. And the second test is, hey, you, are you equal to, are you equal to this second heading, F4? And if you are, then let's give us the second table, F4. 
So I'll stop there for now. Let me just close this bracket. And then if I enter, again, you're going to get a value error because you're showing a range. But let me press F2. Let's just go into the formula. I want to go into formula without using the uh, formula bar. So what about here we're saying if, if G5, are you equal to this? If you are, give me the range. Are you equal to uh, a direct? If you are, give me the range. If not, that's at the end, if not, just give me this final table. We don't really need to do that last test. So we close the bracket and enter. Okay, let's check. Fx, let's check what's going on. So checks whether one or more conditions are met and returns the value corresponding to the first true condition. Oh, you need to do all of them. Unfortunately, you can't do just that. You need to do everything. So even the last test, we need to do that last test. Direct, are you equal to, are you equal to retail? So this is a little bit tedious, F4. And then we now highlight the last one. But again, this is just one function instead of using two. So if you have many, many things like this to do, many tables, conditional tables that you need to bring out, it's easier. So look at this formula. This formula, look at it. It had if and two ifs. This one just has one ifs. And then, of course, we can go to the beginning of the formula and put that our VLOOKUP trick. Say, hey, VLOOKUP. I want you to look up the quantity, then comma. Then at the end of my formula, I want you to do the comma and give me the third column. And then I don't put any comma false. I just leave it that way. And we get our 15%. And both of them are working. So if this was um, retail, you can see both of them change. Perfect. Nice. So that's ifs. But I think switch is better. So here, let's try switch. So switch, what we do is equal to switch. And switch is, it has a very subtle difference from ifs. But look at what switch does now. For those using Power BI, for those in, in Power BI, you would know switch. Switch is an excellent tool in Power BI. In fact, this is a, an example of Excel borrowing from Power BI. Because most of the time, I think 99% of the time, Power BI borrows from Excel and they keep on building Power BI, and every new feature you see in Power BI, you will see, ah, we have this in Excel, we have this in Excel. But this is an example of something in Power BI that Excel has now borrowed. So switch is an excellent uh, function. Look at what it does. It says expression. What is the expression? Then value one and result one, right? So what expression are we looking at? So expression is this is our expression, right? This retail. This is what we're we're looking at, retail. So if, if it's retail that we want, value one and result one basically means that uh, for retail, okay, value one is online, okay? Value one is online, and the result one for online is the table for online, okay? So here, expression basically says like the thing we're testing. We're testing this thing for everybody. And your value one basically says, hey, what is value one that we're going to compare to the expression? And then what result do I want by getting that value one, right? So, and then your value two, your default or value two is still the same thing, um, this direct, right? Which I'll lock. And then the result for value two is the table. And then your value three or default basically means since it's you, you only have the last one, that can be the default. We just highlight the table and we do F4. Now, if you have any questions, guys, just put your hands up and then I can slow down and explain maybe something you didn't get. But if I click OK, again, we're going to have a value error. You already know why. So I do F2, F9, and you'll see the calculations there. You see that it's showing us the right table. It's showing us the correct table. So that's um, values. So if you have a question before I continue, can you just ask a question? Put your hand up. If you have any questions, good to continue. All right, super. So maybe I'll give you a bonus because there's another very complex formula that uh, could do this as well. But this is VLOOKUP 
and then I say, okay, give me what Switch gave me. Switch is switching between various tables. I think Switch is the most is the cleanest out of the three. Switch, and then uh, no, sorry, before we do Switch, I want to look up the quantity. Then I do a comma. Then we do our switch and then give me column three and then I close my bracket. So VLOOKUP works. So this is switch. This this is if, this is if, this is switch and they all work fine. And then we can highlight this three and then double click. So question, which of these three functions do you prefer? Can you type it in the chat? Do you prefer if, ifs or switch? Okay, Solomon prefers switch. Solomon Paul prefers switch and switch, switch. Uh, switch is winning everything, why? Okay, let's even check the length of the formula. Okay, let me, if, if you, let's see which formula is the longest. So uh, sometimes when I want to test formulas, I do long tests, right? So let me put all these formulas here. There's a function called formula text. So formula text, let's see what the if looks like. This is what the if looks like, right? If you look up. So this is what the if looks like. Let's see what the ifs looks like. And let's see what the switch looks like. All right. So I found what the if looks like. Let's see what the formula text. So formula text, what it does, it just goes into a cell that has a formula and then extracts the formula and shows you what the formula is. And then formula text for switch. So if you look at it, you can see that uh, the switch function is the shortest. Switch function is the shortest, right? So that's cool. So that's if, ifs, and switch. Now quickly, let's look at two other new functions in 2017, concat and text join. Interesting functions, concat and text join. Now, um, for concat and text join, let me use another sheet. Let me use another sheet to explain concat and text join. Now, one thing with the uh, concat and text join is if you want to, I, I, I think it's best to use it when you want to reduce your file size and send maybe one column. So for example, look at this data. I would like to combine this entire data into just one column by putting a delimiter of maybe a dash or a pipe. Pipe symbol is this, this is pipe. Oh, sorry, not here, this is pipe. I like using this pipe symbol. So, so what I want to do is this, I want to accomplish something like this. For this row of data, yeah, I want to do this. I want to make it show something like this, two, three, two, six, two, then the pipe, then the name of the person, Candice Levy, yeah, then the pipe then um, like that, you, you get what I mean. So I want to just put pipe, pipe, pipe. Now, if I want to use concatenate, everybody knows concatenate. This is the old one. Concatenate, so do with concatenate, look at what I'll have to do. I'll have to click the first item, right? Then I come to the text two and put the pipe. Then I click the second, I, the third, uh, text three, then put the pipe. Then text for, you get what I mean. And then you continue doing that until you build this thing. Now, but concat, see concat. Concat is a new function. And concat, what it does is it just allows me to highlight all like this. So once I highlight everything like that and I close my bracket and enter, guess what it does? It joins everything. Just look at that. Look at that it joins it all together. Now, the only problem with this is what? Can you identify it? Can you tell me? So for the pipe symbol, the pipe symbol uh, is on your keyboard. Um, it, just check your keyboard. Okay, let me see. Usually to the right of shift, to the right of shift is the pipe uh, symbol, to the right of shift. Or you can use insert symbol if you can't find it. So, um, okay, so what is the problem with this? I don't have the pipe, isn't it? So since I don't have the pipe, to get the pipe, that's where text join comes in. Text join is a far better uh, symbol. So look at what text join does. So text join says, what is your delimiter? So I'm gonna put control A. 
text john says what is your delimiter my delimiter is the pipe ignore empty let's see text one so text one well let's see text one let's see if text join is smart enough so text one let's highlight all the text and let's just see what it gives us so once you do that i said my delimiter is a pipe and then ignore empty well let's leave that true or false you can leave that you can say true ignore empty or false don't ignore empty and then we click ok so what text join did is this it just put pipe 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 everywhere perfectly so this is far better than um the concat i think it's a better approach than concat and what this can do is that you can now send this file i'll save as text and then if you save as text this you can now send it to somebody and someone can use text to column to break it into a table very very small files so if you have a huge file you could basically send it out like this it reduces your file size so that's text join. Let me quickly do flash fill. Flash fill, a lot of us, I don't know how I've forgotten to use flash fill. Flash fill, if for example, I want to start here, I want to extract this start here, here. Yeah, I want to extract start here, which is, um, these are all presidents in the United States, I guess is, is our new president there. Yep, Donald Trump is right there at the bottom of the list. Interesting. So um, our start here, I want it to be 1789, right? But I want to now fill all of that out down here. Uh, and for you to do that, if you, you need to really know Excel very well, maybe you use a delimiter, you go and find out where this dash is and then pull it. You do a lot of mid, all sorts of formulas. You, you don't really need that. Let me just format this as general so, so that it's not a number, just simple general format. Now I do 1789, then I enter and I do, what's the next one? 1790, can you see? What's happening here? Flash fill is trying to be um, smart, but it's not really doing, it's already kind of guessing what it is we want. So that's what flash fill does. When you type one item and you must make sure you're next to, because we're trying to extract something from here. So you must go straight to the next column. It has to be the next column, not any four columns after the next column. Then you type the first thing you want. The moment you're typing the second thing you want, usually flash fill will just work. And once it just works, you just type enter. You hit your enter key and it just fills it out. Okay, so let me pretend that flash filter didn't work this time. So 1797, okay, enter. Then I do 1801 and then I enter. All right, now let's say flash fill didn't really get it. So what you do to help flash fill work is you just click here. There's a shortcut control E. Control E just fills it. So what I just did is Control E. I was just clicking anywhere here and I did Control E. Control E will flash fill, okay? So you can write that down, write that shortcut down. It's an excellent shortcut, Control E, flash fills. Now, if you forget Control E, what you can do is after putting an example for the flash fill, come just click anywhere and then go to data. Under data, you will see flash fill under data tools flash fill, just click flash fill and it fills, okay? So that, that's how you do flash fill. There are many other uh, interesting things about flash fill, but really I have to jump straight into PowerPoint because we have to talk about power, I mean, not power, uh, we have to talk about our uh, Power BI top five. I know I haven't talked about tree map, I'll quickly do that, but let's quickly look at our Power BI top five. So our Power BI top five, if you watched our webinar, I think for November, and if you haven't, please go and watch our webinar for November. Go to the uh, YouTube channel, type D Brown Consulting, and you see bookmarks. Bookmarks, I think, are extremely one of the best features that they brought in last year, bookmark or bookmarking. It, it's really, really, really cool. Uh, and then English language queries came in in December. To me, I think this is the, uh, also very, very powerful. For those that have powerbi.com, English language query basically means, in fact, let me demo it for you. I'm going to open Power BI because this is worth demoing for sure. So let me show you English language queries. Okay, I'm going to open Power BI. I'll just open a quick Power BI. 
All right, so what is English language queries? So if you look at my data, I have data on um, budget and data on sales and stuff from revenue for a particular year. So when you give an exec and an exec wants to ask questions about your data, all they need to know is have an idea about what the data is, then click anywhere in the canvas in Power BI, then they can go to view, I mean, go to a home, they should see Q&A in home. Under home, under insert, you see ask a question. When you click ask a question, this kind of box comes up. Now, what this is basically saying is waiting for you to ask a question in English. So here I can say uh, revenue by state. All I did uh, type was revenue by state. And guess what? A chart just came out. Revenue by state. And a chart comes out. That is how wonderful Q&A is. Whenever, when you build your data model in Power BI, the first thing you should do is just Q&A. Just be doing various Q&A. And Q&A also is kind of mixed with artificial intelligence through machine learning because it's a machine le a learning language or, or engine running inside Power BI that can even help you make some detailed analytics. Now, one of the best visuals, if I don't get to it, is narrate. There's a narrate visual that helps you narrate uh, what happened. So for example, your manager says, hey, what happened? Bet what's the variance between last year and this year? Why was there a variance? You could ask this custom visual called narrative to give you a narrative of what happened. And to tell you, oh, uh, production went down by 20% because, uh, to, uh, I don't know, plant was, down for plant was down for 20 days. It will go into your data and go and look for the reasons why something happened and then narrate it in English. So that's a custom visual. If you haven't used it before, please go check it out. So this visual, I just typed revenue by state. Let me say by state, maybe on a map. Let me see if that works, on a map. I hope my internet works. So look at this, I said by state on a map, and then you can see what is done. It's just created a map of Nigeria and showing me revenue by state on a map. So I'll remove on a map, I'll say uh, with tree map. Let me say with tree map, tree map. Okay, can you see? This is the tree map visual I talked about. So this revenue by state with tree map. So look at it, revenue by state with tree map. And I can expand the tree map and guess what? My Q&A has just given me a custom visualization. Beautiful custom visualization. Since we talked about tree maps in Excel, I'm going to take this data. I'm going to take the data for this and then we're going to create a tree map in Excel exactly like this. So to do that, I'm going to replicate this, Control C. Let me delete this to the left. I really like tree maps. I think it's far better than pie charts. So control C, I'm gonna click here, control V. And then once I control V, I've created a new one. I'm gonna change this to a table visual. So I've changed this to a table visual here. This is a table visual. I just wanted to grab the data. And then let me see if we can, can it allow me to grab the data? Or well, in fact, do you know what, what I could do? I could just copy, uh, it will not allow me to grab. Let me see if I do. If I change it to this one, Control A, I think we can just go to the back end and get the data so that I can create a small map. Where is revenue and state? Okay, so we have store name and state. Let's say I just want the revenue figures. Copy. So I'm just picking the revenue figures and we're going back to Excel. So I go back to Excel and let me just drop data. Um, Power Query. Oh, do you know what? I'm just going to quickly get some random data. Let's use let's use what we already have. Let's use uh, state, these countries, right? So I'll just use these countries and the units sold. So let's do a, a tree, a tree, a tree map. So I'm going to do a tree map based on this data. And this two data right here, this data and this data, two of them. I'm going to use this to create a tree map. So let's quickly insert under charts. We now have, if you click on the button for charts, this corner button here, there are some new chart types out. I'll just say all charts. And we should have a tree map visual. 
So I have a tree map visual, and because there's so many states, I think you have so many dots, but this is tree map. And then I, I click OK. So what I did was I highlighted, um, I just highlighted there's just too many, too many states in the world. So it's it really doesn't make sense. Uh oh, and can you imagine that? Because there are way, way too much data, and, and tree map visual has crashed my system, Excel. One thing I discovered with Excel 2016 is not as stable as 2013. So it kind of crashes your system more often than it should. So let me jump back to the slides and let's finish off by saying we had Q and A, English language queries, and then we have show values as. Now show values as for those that use pivot tables. Who uses pivot tables here? How many of us are pivot table kings? If you are not, please, you need to be. How many of us use pivot tables? Or oh, is it pivot tables? What's new in Excel? Yeah, okay, okay. Excel is trying to tell us what's new in Excel, which is good. I'm just gonna close that, close this. Okay. And yeah, so uh, show value as analytics. So this is uh, pivot tables. You have uh, show value as was a pivot table tool that Power BI has borrowed. So in pivot tables, when you have your values, you can right click a value in pivot table and say show value as percentage of grand total, percentage of that total. We now have that in Power BI, very cool. Then super custom visuals. I'm going to show you the narrative visual, um, but these are super custom visuals that are also very, very key, uh, custom visualizations in Power BI, but I'll show you how to get that narrative visual. And then the last thing that we think was the best thing for last year were connections. There were far, lots of new, powerful connections, SAP, new connections to SAP, very new connections to many things. I think they're up to a hundred now. They're like a hundred connections. This means you can connect Power BI and Excel to hundred different data sources through Power Query. So you, you can imagine connecting to Oracle, SQL, um, text, Excel, even online on the web and stuff. You can connect to nearly everything, which is just so powerful. So for example, if I come here, I can just go to get data and I can, everything you do in Power BI, you can do it in Excel. The only thing you can't do is these new visualizations, all these new custom visualizations. You can't really get those in Excel, only use what you have in Excel. Or if you're extremely good in Excel, you can build it yourself too in Excel. So here you could come, let's, let's quickly get that custom visual. When you're in Power BI, there are two ways or even, uh, so yeah, two ways you can get custom visuals. There's under the home tab, you have the custom visual section here where you can get from file, which means you've downloaded the custom visual already and put it on your desktop or somewhere and then you connect to it or you get from, that's from store, uh, from file. So, and then you get from store, which is you go online. So let, let's go to the store, let's say from store. So I'm clicking on from store. Now to click on from store, you must make sure you've logged in. You have to have logged in already. So I'm clicking from store. So what Power BI is doing is going to the store, Microsoft store, and then is listing out all the visualizations you have. So that's from store. So here you have all, you have editors pick, you have KPI. So if you know the visual you're looking for is something to do with KPI, you click on KPI, you see these are the KPI visuals, custom visuals that you can bring into your reporting, yeah? So these are custom visuals, not standard visuals, which I have to the right, custom visuals. So what I'm looking for is, narr is a narrative. So let's see if the search can work for us. Nar let me just take Nara. I hope it does it. Have they improved it? Let's check. No, they haven't. So you have to actually find the full name of the spelling. So I think it's usually at the bottom. Let me just go down. Narrative visual, narrative, narrative, narrative. Where are you? If you have to know exactly how to spell it, narrative, it's like a pen. They use the pen to depict it. Oh, the narrative visual is hiding from view. Let's say advanced analytics. Let's see if it's there. Advanced analytics, because to me that is like an advanced analytics. So utilize dot journey. Yep, here we go. Narrative for business intelligence. That's the name of the visual. Narrative for business intelligence. Discover insights hidden in your data and automatically transform the data into dynamic narratives. So all you do is add. You click on add. So what it does is going to now add that visualization into your um, 
And you say, okay, and here we go. This is the narrative visual. So once you click on the narrative visual, you would have to now know how to use it. But again, once you go online, you'll be able to see how to use these visualizations online because they will download a sample visual. So let me show you how that's done. If you go, let's just quickly go online and then we download it because that's what I think you should go practice that. So go and check that out. I'm going to go online. Uh, switch, switch. Oh, okay, let me just take this out a bit. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm going online. So this, my, this is actually my Office 365 connection. I want us to go to, all you need to do is type power, this is type power BI custom visuals. So I just Google type power BI custom visuals, that should appear. So you have the app store, find the right app. So there we go. So Power BI, just type Power BI custom visuals there and you should be able to get the narrative visual. So once you do that, you'll see custom visuals for Office 365, Excel. Excel also has a uh, lot of apps. So we need to click on Power BI uh, visuals and then we do a search for the narrative visual. Where is our search box? Okay, the search box usually is not as smart as we would like, but let's just, eyeball it and let's find a narrative visual. Uh, no, no, this won't help. Let's, where is custom visual? Let's look for the narrative and see if it comes out. Yeah, we go, cool. So it even got an Office App Award in 2017. Yeah, how cool. So if you click, don't click get it now, just click on it, click the visual itself. You would usually see a sample. So what happens is I click on the visual. You usually see if I go to reviews, we have the sample there. These are people's reviews. Someone oh, reviewed quite low, but have only been able to get the app to work once. Okay, well, something's up with the system. So here we have this. If I click on this, it gives us a visual. Now, typically you should have samples. So maybe these guys didn't put a sample, which is sad, but other visuals have a sample file, which you could download. And, and 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 then you'll be able to, let's say get it now. Let's go to get it now. Maybe that's where they put it. Get it now, continue, and taking you to Power BI Visuals to complete this process. Okay, so they kind of made it a bit longer, but they've moved all the visualizations into a Microsoft Store before they were directly on powerbi.com. So we have to now go to the store, Microsoft Store. But don't worry, it's free. This is a free visual. So you can select to download the visualization or download the visual or download a sample report to the right, which is what I was looking for. Download a sample report. And here we have a sample report. I'm gonna put it on my desktop. Uh, just put it on the desktop. All right, so save. So here we go, it's saving the sample report. And then I can now open the sample report and once I open the sample report, you can now use it and practice it before you now practice it on your own real work. So I think uh, that's pretty cool. So it's opening up on my system now, and then you practice. So I, I advise you go get this visual. I think it's the best visual for last year and even got an award for last year. In last year. And they keep updating these visuals every time. So um, always go and look for updates as well. Now, if you use uh, Windows 10, most of the updates will be done for you. So this is the sample report. This is what it looks like. Once you download it, you read how to use it, and then you go check out how they used it in various reports. So look at this report, for example, you have your typical uh, data, and then let's say you have an executive scorecard. This is your executive scorecard, which is designed like for your mobile, yeah? And industry margin analysis, let's see. I'm looking for narrative. Where are your narratives, narrative? We should have had one with a with a good narrative. Revenue by state, nope. Nope, no narrative here. So this is the only small narrative I think I saw. 
But again, you can read it, could not write a story because the narrative extension could not interpret the data for, was an issue with the narrative for Power BI API. Hmm. This is not a very good advert for narrative. There's supposed to have been a narrative here. So anyway, you check it out and we can check out what was wrong with that. But that's how you get your custom visualizations and put it in. All right. And then of course we have our trainings online. If you like, go and do the free Excel one or even send the free Excel one to someone you know that would need some Excel skills. So these are the courses we have on our online course, uh, e-learning uh, course website, which is officetraininghub.com. If you want to pay for our courses in Naira, you could go to our website, dbrownconsulting.net, then go to training, and then you go to online courses. So once you go to online courses, you'll be able to pay for those courses in Naira. So it's a bit uh, easier so, and, and they're quite, quite cheap. So I, I recommend if you haven't done this report automation in modern Excel, this will teach you everything you need to know to automate any report in Excel, very powerful. And so we're gonna be talking uh, in the webinar, something similar to scenario and sensitivity analysis. So we're gonna see you in the webinar for, um, for Power BI. I mean, not for Power BI, for financial modeling. So, but before we go, please, could you answer another quiz question? Because I'm wondering if, how long everybody here has been using um, Excel. So I wanted to just ask, okay, so we have some serious gurus here. 30% uh, of us have used Excel for more than 10 years. Okay, the percentage is going down. 25% have used Excel for more than 10 years. Wow, excellent. But I hope you learned something. So if you did, please just type in your um, question box, type well, what interesting thing you learned today that was new. And then we're gonna call it a day because we're gonna prepare for the next webinar. So just type out what you think you learned today that was new in the chat. And then please, once it, once it goes off, they have a small evaluation to fill. If you can fill that, that would be very nice. So switch is the main thing. And I know people are gonna be using switch a lot. Switch, switch. Okay, text join. Some people like text join. Are they gonna use text join? And again, tree map, someone wants, will want to use the tree map. Tree map, um, by the way, you cannot use tree maps with a pivot table. So that's just a, a, a sad thing. You cannot use tree maps with pivot tables. You need to have your data in Excel itself for you to be able to use tree maps. All right. Yeah, you can use it in pivot tables. So what you do is you can use some funny formulas that extract data from your pivot table and puts it on an Excel and then you use your tree map. Yeah, all right. Okay, so good. So we continue these webinars every last Thursday of the, or third Thursday of the month. So it's continuing again next week. You will get an email from us uh, requesting for uh, some ideas that you want, or you can even send an email straight to training at dbrownconsulting.net. Join our newsletters as well. And uh, we hope to see you next month. And of course, if you're doing any, if you're doing the financial modeling, we also see you in the next uh, one hour. So thank you, everybody, and we'll have to say bye-bye now. I'll leave you with the Power BI uh, website page, which just shows all the wonderful things you can do with Power BI. So see you next month. Bye-bye, guys.